Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Today, I want to talk about similarities and differences between the Race 3D Pro 2 and the Race 3D Pro 3, because this one's new and a number of things have changed. Um, if you do have any questions while we're doing this, please leave them in the chat. If you're watching this as the recorded video later on, then just leave your question as a comment below the video and we'll do our best to answer later. So I think that's all I have to say as ter in terms of an intro, so let's just get right into it. So, the Race 3D Pro 2 over many years has been one of the staple of Race 3D's portfolio. portfolio. It's a very stable machine that was able to uh, produce very nice prints at decent speeds and, you know, provide really, really good print quality. And then they decided to improve on it with the Pro 3. And as I mentioned, this one is fairly new and it's taken some of the weaknesses of the Pro 2 and improved on them. Both of these machines look very similar and that's because, well, from the outside, they are. Uh, they use almost identical frames, so the size is practically identical. They both have the same sized touch screens. They both have a plastic cover on top. They both have this material storage system for the spools on the side of the printers. Uh, they both have a door in front. They both have a, a recovery after power loss feature. Both of them have a HEPA filter. Both of them have optical end stops. Um, both of them are Wi-Fi enabled, so you can connect to them over the Wi-Fi network in your office, for example, uh, and send them print files and so on. So these things are all still the same, but then a couple of key components have changed on the Pro 3, and that's exactly what I want to get into a little bit more now. First, the Z-axis lead screw and the Z-axis guide rods have been improved on. Not sure if that was necessary. They were already extremely stable on the Pro 2, but the stiffness has been increased by about 75%, at least so I've been told, and the, the guide rods have just become way thicker. So that's exactly where that comes from. So the uh, Z-axis stiffness has been increased by about 75%. There's a small change here in terms of build volume. Because on this one, the printhead has been redesigned completely, and we'll see more of that later, the uh, print volume has changed slightly. Whereas on the Pro 2, the uh, print volume was 305 by 305 by 300 millimeters. On the Pro 3, it is 300 by 300 by 300. So we've lost five millimeters in the X and Y directions, and that is due to the redesigned printhead. Of course, just like with the Pro 2, there is also a plus model of the Pro 3 adding another 30 centimeters in build height. So then the single extrusion build volume would be 300 by 300 by 605 millimeters uh, on the Pro 3. So the plus model exists as well, but the build volume height is the only difference. Everything else stays the same. The same features, the same screen, the same software, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so those two things off the bat. Then there's a better camera inside the printer. So whether you use the camera to monitor your prints via the Race Cloud interface or via the Race Cloud app, or just via the Idea Maker Connect feature, that camera will provide clearer images now with better quality. So you can always see what exactly is happening in your printer. I've got a little cheat sheet here. If you're wondering why I keep glancing there, uh, those are all my talking points so I don't forget anything. Then the Pro 3 now has door and lid sensors. So the printer notices whenever I open the door or the top cover and can automatically pause and then resume the print. This can be very important for ISO certified companies or other safety measures. For example, if you have kids running around or you're using this in a school, anything like that. Of course, you can turn the safety feature off. Um, exactly, the Pro 2 did not have this. So another incremental improvement. Then on the back of the Pro 3, you may have already seen it, there's this big black thing. And I can turn the printer a bit so you can see it here protruding from the back as well. This is the so-called airflow manager. And what the airflow manager is designed to do is uh, blow a, or circulate air inside the machine, thereby cooling down the average temperature of the entire chamber. Uh, the purpose of this is to be able to print PLA, TPU, PTG, anything like this, always while keeping the cover on. 
On the Pro 2, you would sometimes have the issue that if you were printing PLA and you kept the cover on, so much heat would get stored up inside the cover that the material would already soften inside the tubes leading to the printhead, and then you would get jams or clogs and, well, your print would fail. But as the solution was, take the cover off. But for some companies, as I've mentioned, ISO certification, that is not an option. You need to keep the cover on top. And for those cases, that's exactly when the airflow manager comes into play and can reduce the average temperature inside the chamber by about six to eight degrees Celsius. That is enough to make sure that these problems don't occur anymore. So that's what the airflow manager is for. Um, then probably one of the biggest changes going from the Pro 2 to the Pro 3, and you most likely have already seen it, this whole big blocky, bulky printhead has been completely redesigned from the ground up. First, the filament runout sensor that is sitting on top here has now been moved to the side of the machine. They're now here on the, well, on the side. Um, and not as many motors are stuck to it anymore. A, the stepper motors have gotten smaller and they're now on the back. Whereas there was sometimes an overheating issue on the Pro 2, that is not the case for the Pro 3 anymore because, well, they're better, better situated. Um, the cable chain that we had on the Pro 2 has been replaced with a flat ribbon cable. Let me take this top off. It's getting irritating. Um, so we now have a flat ribbon cable to bring all the data to the printhead. And thanks to the sleeker and more modern design, we now have a straight path for the filament right from the top where the quick couple is for the tube all the way down to the nozzle. So that is a much more optimized path that allows for more flexibility and uh, easier access if anything should ever happen. There are two gear wheels in here, so two gear wheels pulling on the filament and pushing it towards the nozzle. The only thing I kind of dislike about this solution is that there is no way to adjust the tension that these two gears apply to the filament. So there may be issues if you're printing very, very soft filament. I haven't had any issues yet, but your mileage may vary. Then they came up with something, and let me switch to the other camera here. They came up with a cartridge system for the printhead as well. So just by lifting up this little red tab, you can then remove the entire hardened assembly essentially and swap it out for a new one or a different one. So you could keep uh, multiple ones at hand, for example, one with a brass nozzle, one with a steel nozzle. Uh, or you kind of have just a spare brass one lying around and as soon as the brass one you have in your machine is worn out or gets clogged or anything like this, you just swap it out for a new one, recalibrate, keep printing, and then take your time cleaning or replacing the, uh, the worn out or clogged one. Uh, so that can be an improvement to increase productivity, reduce the amount of time of standstill of the machine. Nozzle swapping was already, always a lot of work and took a significant amount of time and effort on the Pro 2. No such thing anymore on the Pro 3. Just take out one hot and assembly and insert a new one. So the printhead here completely redesigned. We also have these little LEDs on the front to indicate the printer status, whether it's heating, printing, or just idle. Um, Right, so much for the printhead redesign, then the print uh, beds, the, the built plates. On the Pro 2, the built plate is made of aluminium and it's rigid. And there's a built tech surface on top of it, but because the whole thing is rigid, if you have prints on it and they're really stuck there, you need to have a metal spatula and really scrape and push and try to get it off the built tech surface. Sometimes that means you damage your Biltec surface and that kind of sucks because then you need to replace it or just live with a damaged area. So there has been an improvement on that as well. Now on the Pro 3, you get a flexible steel plate with a Biltec surface on top, which means that if you have a larger print on top, you just flex the built plate, the part comes right off. Really like this change. This is one of the was one of my biggest gripes with the Pro 2 printer whenever I used it. This is just such a huge quality of life improvement. And you will underestimate how much of a difference it makes if you've never used one of these. It does mean that when printing very large prints with something warp prone, such as ABS, um, if it takes up the entire width of the print bed, try and use extra clamps on the front to assist the magnets because 
If your print is really, really big, the magnets may not be quite strong enough and it can uh, pull the, the uh, flexible steel plate a little up on the corners. So just use clamps and then you don't have that issue anymore. Um, so, so much about the um, belt plates. What else do I got? I also have the auto leveling, right. Along with the redesigned printhead, there is now a little Z probe on the bottom and you can use that to help you level the belt plate. Leveling the belt plate uh, on the Pro 2 was a miserable task. You had these little screws below and you always had to kind of guesstimate how, much, how far to turn them, rehome, test with a, a, um, the little calibration card, whether the distance between the nozzle and the belt plate was good. Then you move to the next screw, etc., etc. Now you can let the printer do the work and you get this nice little color diagram showing you exactly what the flatness of your print bed is like and where it had, uh, would have to be adjusted upwards or downwards. This is also a huge time saver. And in addition, before each print, the printer automatically measures the surface area it would need for that print. And then it can compensate for slight differences in uh, the flatness of your belt plate while printing. So uh, you no longer need to print a raft. It should always just work and look great. Huge difference when using this printer. Um, also, of course, the Z-axis calibration, so the Z-height, um, now works via that probe as well. So whereas before in the Pro 2, you would have this little screw on the side for the optical end stop, and uh, you would have to home it, test with a paper, rehome it, test with a paper. Um, all of that is gone. Now it is just that little probe down below the extruder that measures the print bed. And it's made of metal, so you don't need to worry about any heat inside of the uh, build volume warping your little uh, Z, uh, Z probe, as sometimes could happen with the BL touch systems. No such problems here. Then on the display. Uh, if you have a, an E2 printer, you already knew that auto leveling feature, and you may also know this next step, which is video assisted calibration. There are little videos integrated into the screen uh, to help you through the entire calibration process. It'll always tell you exactly what to do, what to do next, what to wait for. So I really like that as well. It guides you through the Z probe offset for both the left and the right nozzle and the XY calibration as well. So. Whereas before you wouldn't need to have the user manual or uh, teach people this manually, now everything is included on the screen. Speaking of the screen, there is now an intelligent assistant named Eve integrated into this as well. She will ask you how she can help you. If you cancel your print, she will ask you why you did so. Was there a problem? And if there was, she offers several options. For example, uh, filament monitor error or a uh, print model failed, and then you can tap yourself through sort of a, a chat uh, with this intelligent assistant. And then um, she will offer uh, suggestions of what to do uh, and even guide you right into the offset calibration wizard. And I like this because especially with some of the more inexperienced users, this just alleviates some of the fears. It takes the user by the hand and guides them through each step of the process. After a number of machine hours have been you know, used up, she will uh, remind you to lubricate your axes, do all these sorts of things as well. So it also helps keep with the maintenance uh, of the printer. So Eve Assistant, also a new feature on the Pro 3. And then there's the sleep mode, or the energy saving mode, let's put it that way, because the printer doesn't sleep. It'll keep printing, but using the little moon symbol, I can turn off both the screen and the inside LEDs, thereby saving power. If I frequently print very long prints of multiple hours, I don't need the screen and the internal lighting to be on the entire time. I can turn those off, just save a little bit of electricity. So I also like that. On the Pro 2, everything is always on. Okay, I think that's most of the differences between the Pro 2 and the Pro 3, all of the new features. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, please let me know. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got everything though. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for today. So uh, if you do have any questions or comments, please uh, write them in the chat now or just leave them as a comment on the recorded video later on and then we'll do our best to get back to you quickly. Uh, if you have any other feedback, for example, uh, my microphone sucks or the lighting sucks or I'm not speaking clearly enough, 
uh, please let me know as well, because then I can fix all those issues. Um, aside from that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you'll be back. Do consider subscribing to the channel if content surrounding 3D printing and 3D scanning interests you. We'll have more videos as time goes on. And um, yeah, thanks for being here and hopefully see you next time. Bye.